Hello and welcome to this new tutorial. Today we will be having a look at how to import Blender EXRs into After Effects. Now this will be a pretty straightforward tutorial like the last one with Natron. However, today we will also be having a look on how to properly export a vector pass into After Effects so you can create a motion blur in compositing using the RSMB motion blur tool in After Effects. Keep in mind that that's a paid add-on. I don't think there's any very usable free alternatives that you can use in After Effects. But to be honest, pretty much everyone I've seen um, in professional projects and so on use RSMB. It's just the go-to motion blur add-on for After Effects. And if you don't have the add-on, it doesn't matter because this tutorial still mainly focuses on just how to get EXR into After Effects like working properly. So we have this test scene here and it's animated um, just so I can show the motion blur um, process. And so the first thing which we always do is enable the and install the uh, super image denoiser add-on, which is a very nice denoising setup. And then we go to the render properties and we scroll down and we go to create super denoiser. So let's leave this all checked and make sure to enable use multi XR and then press add super denoiser. And then we head over to the compositing. As we can see, we already have these few nodes set up. This is our denoiser and we also already get a file output node. And as you can see, I already prepared this for our motion blur pass and so I added this vector file output here. Uh, you can do this by going to the file output, then to node, then to properties, and then just add an input and name it vector. And we also need to enable the vector pass. So you can go to view layer properties here and then enable vector. So, and your first thought might be to just drag the vector here, um, but this is not gonna work. We need to convert the vector map that we get from Blender to a suitable state that the RSMB add-on in After Effects can use. And we can do this by purchasing. It's a purchased uh, add-on. Um, it's only 10 bucks. And if you always use Blender and After Effects, you might as well just buy it for the $10. And um, we go to append. And once you've bought the file, you get a, well, you, you basically buy a Blender file. And from that file, you can append this node tree, it's the RSMB motion vector AOV 1.2. And then we press Shift A and we just add this here. And there isn't really much to do. So we just drag the vector into the vector and the alpha into the alpha. And in my case, I already have a render sort of pre already rendered. So if I drag this into a, let's say, viewer node. Um, I can already see something. In your case, you would need to render a test image uh, and also make sure to enable your backdrop. So the official site states that a value, a range value of eight is usually appropriate. Um, the most important thing to look out for when using the vector pass and this converter is that you do not have any black spots and also to make sure you have a good range of red, green, and a sort of orange, yellow colors. And in this case, the eight, the number eight for the range works really, really well. And another thing that's important is, is that you need to work with a 32 bit linear file, which would be XR. It's, this is just because the data type of data, the vector contains. And yeah, let's just put this into the file output here. And then we can go ahead and render the sequence. All right, so mid rendering, I noticed an error. And yeah, I'm not gonna hide that in the tutorial. I'm just gonna show what I did wrong. So during rendering, I observed and I noticed that the range was in fact not correct. Um, so I think at 20 frames or something, I saw these black spots, which aren't supposed to happen. So we are just going to increase the slider here. And another thing that's also mentioned on the page, developer page, is that if you sort of, let, let's say you render a hundred frames 
and you have this all nicely set up and afterwards you realize like me right now um, you messed up and the motion blur pass is not usable um, the problem is that we get these images with the applied range and a more efficient way to get around this problem um, would be to create a separate file output node and sort of already like like store your base vector without the range applied and it gives us the flexibility to change the range afterwards without having to re-render everything so when you're rendering especially with passes make sure you really think about what you're doing and if it can save you time like is there any way i can potentially save time you are going to make mistakes quite often and so make sure to sort of have a setup that's very flexible and so that you don't need to re-render a ton of stuff. All right, here we are in After Effects and I already have all my stuff set up. As you can see, the motion blur sort of works, looks decent. And now I will just show you how to set this up as well. So first of all, you need to import your footage. If you've never used After Effects, the way you do it is you double click into this project window and then you just select your sequence and import it. Once you do that, you will be greeted with this prompt and you can import this the way you want for this tutorial. I'm fine with importing it as just footage. This means it imports the footage and creates a composition based on that footage. However, we can also just import it as a composition and create all sorts of um, sort of like a contact sheet and sort of an assembly. And I'll just quickly show you what that exactly is. So here we get a folder with all the stuff. And our contact sheet is basically a list of all the passes that we have. It doesn't matter how many passes you have. If you have even more and even more, it creates a larger scene and it will display all the passes that you have. And the assemble is basically all passes in a timeline just stacked on top of each other. So for me, I don't need this. I'm going to delete this and I'm going back into my composition. So here is my setup. I already have everything set up and we'll just go through it. So once you have your EXR imported into your timeline, we need to extract the passes from our multi EXR file. And we can do that by applying the extractor plugin to our EXR sequence. You can see I have it here and this Add-on sort of allows us to extract the passes from our file and we can do that by pressing on layers here. And in my case, I want the beauty pass, which is also called the image pass here. So I'm going to select that. And now we have the beauty pass and we are basically just looking at that. If I were to switch it to glossy, it would switch to glossy and diffuse would be, well, just a diffuse. The others are not appearing because they are metallic. But yeah, let's go back to image and the first issue you will have is it will look like this for you. Something like this, your scene, it will, the, the gamma will not look right. This is because we're looking at the EXR in an sRGB space, but it hasn't been converted from linear to sRGB yet. So it looks strange, obviously. Uh, we can easily fix this by installing the open color IO add-on. I think the extractor is pre-installed, but I don't think the open color IO is. Uh, I will leave the download in the description and it's free. It's open source. It's an open source tool and you can just easily install it for After Effects. And once you have that installed, go to your plugins and type in open color IO, drag it here and enable it. And if when you enable it, it will still look like this because we still need to correctly convert the linear to sRGB and we so the thing is we can't just uh, select any sRGB we want the filmic sRGB the filmic sRGB is exactly what blender uses it has sort of this filmic view transform so if we were to export a PNG from blender and compare it with just the basic sRGB it is not going to look the same and I prepared a test PNG of the first frame. This is the PNG that we are looking at. And if I turn it off, you can see that our EXR looks not the same. 
And this is because we need the filmic sRGB. We can easily do this by going here to configuration, custom, and then go to the path, local, program files, Blender Foundation, Blender, yeah, Blender version, then the version number, data files, and color management. And here we find the config OCIO. Select that. And now go to output space and select filmic sRGB. And if we turn on the PNG now, you can see it's perfectly the same, which is exactly what we want. We do not want a scenario where the sort of the view where the color spaces are not matching with our 3D software because the results are just going to look different. And that's just not the way you want to work, be it professional or just a hobby project. So yeah, now we have this correctly set up. It was pretty easy. And to finish this tutorial, we are going to have a look at the RSMB, uh, the RSMB plugin, the motion blur pass. And I also prepared this already. Let's get rid of the test PNG and I make all that visible. So if I enable my motion blur that I already set up, we can see that we have pretty much correct motion blur. It looks good. It looks decent. And yeah, I will show you how to set this up easily. So the first thing you want to do is duplicate your EXR sequence and then get rid of the color management add-on. If you work with stuff like vector passes, Z passes, all, like all the stuff that's not actual a direct visual presentation of your image, but just data. So these things you don't want to manipulate with the color space add-on. What you want to do is use the open color IO for your beauty, for your glossy, for your transmission, uh, for your diffuse, for your emission, for these things, but not for stuff like the vector or for example, the Z pass. I guess to simplify it, you could say that stuff like the vector pass and the Z pass are just like technical passes and stuff like the image pass and glossy pass are just visual passes, like the things that you actually see. And so I will be showing you the vector pass. This is how it looks. Um, you will see it's not perfect because we have some black spots, but it works. Um, it's good enough. This is how it looks. We turn this off. First of all, we do not need to see it. We just need to make sure that it, yeah, it's good. And in this case, it's not perfectly fine because we have some black spots, but whatever. Uh, so let's turn this off. And then you can create a adjustment layer and apply your RSMB Pro vectors. Once you have that applied, uh, you want to head over to this section and choose the layer that's the vector pass, so this one. And in your case, it will first of all look like this because this is set to source as standard. And you need to make sure to always look out for that, not just for the RSMB uh, plugins, but for lots of other plugins. You need to make sure that you check effects and masks because the extractor plugin is an effect and if you don't set this to effect it's gonna ignore the extractor and therefore the image is not right because if i if i turn this on here and disable the extractor it's just a black image obviously so yeah and that's about it you can increase your strength uh, to be ridiculous you have a few settings here and that's basically how you export stuff from Blender to After Effects using the multi-layer EXR and how to set up the color space correctly and how to set up the motion blur correctly. I hope this video was helpful and I will see you in the next video.